James Webb is about to take us to the edge of time. NASA's newly launched Space Telescope is a spectacular upgrade, allowing us to see deeper into the past than ever before. From a tropical rainforest to the edge of time itself, James Webb begins a voyage back to the birth of the universe, but now that JWST is settled into its orbit and sending back its first calibration images, we might well ask, what will this instrument tell us about the past, and how does that even work? Characterizing a telescope as a time machine is both over and understating its abilities. The telescope itself doesn't travel through time, but what it does is much more profound than just giving us clues about the past. Telescopes peering out to distant reaches of the universe can see our cosmic history directly. JWST can voyage back to the edge of time, not by actually going anywhere, but by sending us direct images of some of the earliest moments of the universe, showing us what it would have looked like if we had actually been there, more than 13 billion years ago, watching the first galaxies form. It's able to do this partly because of the technology, which includes extraordinarily sensitive sensors in a 6.5-meter primary mirror. The main thing that's different is that JWST will go a factor of 100 times deeper than any existing images, which allows us to increase the number of early universe, first billion years, galaxies known by factors of 100. The longer wavelengths enable JWST to look further back in time to see the first galaxies that formed in the early universe, and to peer inside dust clouds where stars and planetary systems are forming today. JWST has been focused and designed to capitalize and look into the infrared part of the spectrum from 0.6, red light. Light travels in many different ranges of frequencies along the known electromagnetic spectrum. We have evolved to adapt to see accordingly with the band of spectrum which is commonly called, visible light, which is not so surprising as our atmosphere filters out many other wavelengths and also some of us cannot see neither outside nor in the inside of our surroundings. Infrared light is like a north star as it has a longer wavelength and can pass through objects in space which visible light is blocked by, such as gas and dust. JWST enables us to detect infrared frequencies by picking out objects beyond these clouds, which improves our understanding of clarity. The most crucial organ that usually enables James Webb Space Telescope to see back in time is its ginormous sunshield which is half as big as 737 aircraft and about the size of a tennis court with an aperture of 6.5 meters across the shield. Simple understand this fact that when telescopes look at the light from distant galaxies, they are not literally looking back in time. The past no longer exists, so no one can directly look at it. Instead, the telescopes are looking at the present time pattern of a beam of light. Since the beam of light has been traveling through the mostly empty vacuum of space for millions of years, it has been largely undisturbed. Therefore, the present time pattern of this beam of light is the same as the pattern that it had when it was first created by the distant galaxy millions of years ago. By looking at the present time state of a beam of light, we can thus infer what the galaxy that created the light looked like millions of years ago. Let's understand it with more clarity by taking a short example. It's like taking and printing a photograph of your son as a baby, and then looking at the photo 10 years later. When you look at the printed photo, you are figuratively looking back in time, and seeing what your son looked like as a baby. But you are not literally looking into the past. Your son is no longer a baby and does not exist as a baby in any dimension or corner of the universe. Rather, you are looking at a present time pattern of light that is being created by the reflection of the room's light from the inks in the printed photograph. But. Because the ink in the photo has specifically been organized into a pattern resembling your son as a baby, and because the ink pattern has not changed over the last 10 years, the present time beam of light from the photograph has the same pattern as the beam of light that came from your baby son 10 years ago. By looking at a present time bundle of light, you are able to infer how people looked in the past. But implicit in this inference are three assumptions. The camera accurately captured the pattern of light and converted it to a pattern of information. The printer accurately transferred this pattern of information to a pattern of ink on the printed photo, 
and the photo has not changed since it was printed. All of these assumptions must hold true in order for the pattern of light presently coming from the photo to represent the appearance of your sun 10 years ago. For instance, suppose a bit of ink drops on the photo and causes a big blue dot to appear above your sun's head. If you were literally looking back in time when looking at the photo, you would have to conclude that there was a UFO or ball hovering above your boy's head 10 years ago. But you are likely smart enough to realize that you are not literally looking back in time, but are simply looking at a present time pattern of light which no longer exactly represents the pattern of light 10 years ago when you took the photo. Relatively, the current time beams of light hitting telescopes that are pointed at distant galaxies only give us information about the past in so as the light has not been distributed over the years. More realistically, the light from distant galaxies can hover itself as it travels, but it has to transcend in ways that we can understand and deduce if we are to end up with the precise interpretation of the past. Therefore, the present time bundle of light smacking a telescope does not exactly match the appearance of the distant galaxy that first created light millions of years ago, it is redder. Fortunately, scientists now understand the redshift and can adapt to shift the light pattern back by the appropriate and concise amount in order to end up with a conclusive representation of the distant galaxy when it emitted the light. By equipping it with a wide and vast sunshield which also helps in cooling the telescope. It is quite crucial for all the space telescope but more particular with the infrared telescope like JWST as warm objects radiate and emit a lot of infrared light. Soon, we'll be able to see more than just the brightest and rarest representatives of the first generation of galaxies. With JWST, we'll be watching the very first collections of stars coming together all across the cosmos, lighting up their surroundings and setting the stage for the vast and varied universe we see around us today. JWST will finally answer some of our most pressing questions about the origins of structure in the universe. But even more than that, we hope that this new view of the deepest reaches of our cosmic history will present us with new questions we didn't even know enough to ask. If you like the video, share the same and subscribe to our channel, Secrets of Space for Astronomy Updates. Thank you for watching.